If your novel feels uninspired, you may want to check out The Fire in Fiction by Donald Moss, and I'll be talking about it in today's review. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm a writer, I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Fire in Fiction by Donald Moss. And if you haven't heard of Donald Moss, he's a very successful literary agent. He has his own agency out in New York, and he's also something of a writing guru. He's published some notable works, including writing the breakout novel, and more recently he published The Emotional Craft of Fiction. And these two books get a lot of praise, but for whatever reason, the middle child in this particular family, The Fire in Fiction, it doesn't get enough love. And today I want to change that. I want to tell you about why I think it's a great book and why I think a lot of the techniques that Donald Moss talks about in this book are useful and something that can really help you branch out as a writer. Now the premise of the fire in fiction is that every novel should feel inspired. There should be no novels out there that are just you know mailed in and they just feel like they're written by a computer. Every novel should feel inspired and Donald Moss believes that you can bring passion into every one of your stories. Now a lot of writers feel that this is impossible. A lot of times writers think that okay well, sometimes those great stories, the ones that hook us from page one and carry us all the way to the end, sometimes those are just written in a lucky time period or they're written when somebody's really feeling it or, or you know, it's just like this magical process or something like that. And Donald Moss says that is not the case. In fact, it's all about finding the right day-to-day -day process that'll help you shape your story into something great. And that's something that can bring comfort to a lot of writers because for those of us who do wonder, is it all about luck? Is it all about, you know, right place, right time? That's not the case. It's all about finding the right techniques to build the story and to shape it into something great. Now, structurally, The Fire and Fiction is a very simple book. It's nine consecutive chapters. Each one of these chapters deals with a different aspect of writing. You have some of the usual suspects here, things like character and setting and scenes. You also have some more off the beaten path kind of subjects, things like a chapter on hyper reality or how to really bring your stories to life, whether it takes place in the real world or it involves the supernatural. There's also a chapter on tension and if you've been following my videos recently you probably saw the one that was on how you can bring tension into every page of your story. The book I learned that from is this one right here and there are some great chapters toward the end of the book a lot of unique material but even the material that is pretty traditional ones that you find in every single writing guide out there those chapters still have a unique approach to them for instance the chapters on characters will teach you things like how to use self awareness in your characters in order to make them more relatable and likable. The chapter on setting will challenge you to go ahead and instead of just peppering your stories with details, find a way to connect those details emotionally to your characters or use your setting as a metaphor for your character's internal mental state. And there's a lot of great material in here. I'm not going to go too far into detail, but every chapter takes its own unique approach to some aspect of the craft. Now, one thing I absolutely didn't like about the fire and fiction is that Moss uses a lot of contemporary examples. And by contemporary, I mean mid-2000s, because this book was actually published in 2009. And these contemporary examples are not exactly household names, so every time he brings one up, he has to introduce it with a couple paragraphs, you know, basic plot summary, what, what it's about, and then he actually gets into the example. He copy-pastes, like, maybe a page from the book, and then afterwards he recaps the example and he explains like how that applies to what he's trying to teach you and he has this bad habit of getting into spoiler territory and he often spoils the ending of these books which can be very very frustrating especially because sometimes he'll explain what one is about and I'll say to myself well oh, that sounds like a great one maybe I'll add that to my wish list and then a page later he'll go and tell you okay well it ends with the guy getting fired from his job or something like that and it's just like well why did you have to do that that didn't make any sense and I think just the fact that he keeps bringing up these examples and every time he brings one up, he has to go through that process of, okay, here's what it's about. Here's the actual content of the example that helps illustrate what I'm trying to teach. And then here's the recap. That pattern gets a little exhausting. And I kind of wish he had just, instead of, you know, all these different examples, maybe he would have settled on five or six that he kept coming back to over the course of the book so he doesn't have to go through that whole process again and again. But that doesn't kill the book by any means. And I think The Fire and Fiction is a great underrated writing guide. It's perfect for intermediate to advanced writers. And if you're a writer who has been, you know, maybe struggling with a novel or you want to branch out a little bit, you want to try some new techniques, or you want to read a guide that hasn't been read by every other writer out there, 
this is the book for you. I will link it in the description below if you're interested. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is one piece of writing advice that you feel doesn't get enough attention? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.